Christ Gospel Church of St. Petersburg, Florida, where Bishop Preston D.H. Leonard is our international presiding bishop and Dr. Tony Young Jr. is our pastor. We are the church where everyone is welcome, where the Bible is the guide and the Holy Ghost is the director. We are delighted you decided to join us today and pray you will be richly blessed by the praise and worship and by the rhema word from the Lord. Please share this link with your family and friends as we prepare to go into our service. May God bless you.
Welcome to Christ Gospel Church Sunday School, where Preston D.H. Leonard is our bishop and Dr. Tony Young Jr. is our pastor. Before we begin our lesson, we like to have a song exercise, and it goes something like this. Will you join me in it if you know it? I'm inside, outside, upside, downside, happy all the time. I'm inside, outside, upside, downside, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in, he cleansed my life from sin. I'm inside, outside, upside, downside, happy all the time. I'm inside, outside, upside, downside, happy all the time. I'm inside, outside, upside, downside, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in, he cleansed my life from sin. I'm inside, outside, upside, downside, happy all the time. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we do thank you for this opportunity again that is ours to share your word. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Today's lesson is adopted from the Herald of His Coming newsletter. Our title is Facing the Future with Hope. If you can remember the last time that I spoke, it was facing the future with faith. For we walk by faith and not by faith. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And today's lesson is going to be part two, which is facing the future with hope. Our solutions to America's problems is not found in the White House, but in the house of God. Why? Because God is still in charge. Many of the problems in America today is that our nation is sliding downward fast as she continues to turn her back on God. The United States is quickly becoming the divided states with signs of disunity and racial divide. Our nation, ills are not the result of corrupt politicians, terrorists, or extremists. Our troubles can be traced to ineffective Christians. Furthermore, the world is in serious trouble. The world and the church are in a mighty conflict the spiritual warfare is intensifying the powers of darkness. And they are massing for the last awful struggle. The church has one weapon with which to fight by facing the future with hope. As Christians, we hold the destiny of this land in our hands. Now is the one time that we can come together and seek the Lord. Now is the time to call a solemn assembly. America is missing three ingredients. Anyone who knows me know that I enjoy cooking. Nothing like peanut butter turkey stuffed. Nothing like baked spaghetti. And I love to bake. Oh yes, especially pineapple upside down cakes and my spiced walnut cakes. But I found that in cooking, if you leave out any of the ingredients, it will not be as successful. Although we can use substitutes, however, it won't taste like the real thing. What America has done is left out three main ingredients. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 15, Verses five, 3, 5, and 6. Look what the Word of God is saying. Now for a long time, Israel had been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without the law. But when they were in their trouble, they did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him. He was found of them. And in those days there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nations, and city of city, but God did vex them with all adversity. What was wrong? Three crucial things were missing in Israel's national life. And the three things are missing today in America as well. The first and foremost important missing essence is God. We have taken him out of our schools. 
We've taken them out of our homes and even taken them out of our churches. Have you taken them out of your heart? He loves us. For God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, he did something about it. He gave us a future hope. It wasn't saying that Israel was an atheist, but like some of us, we talk God, we sing about God, but our lives do not reflect of God. The Israelites, like us, wanted a convenient God, one they could control. The second thing that was missing in Israel and America was a lack of teaching. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That didn't mean to say that there were no preachers or teachers, except they were not teaching or preaching the truth. They were turning people away from the truth. Too many pastors, too many teachers are preaching to please instead of preaching to reach each soul for the kingdom. Fortunately, as a ray of hope, God is still raising up young men and women who are proclaiming the gospel for our future doesn't look so bleak. The thing missing third is the law of God. When a culture has a false view of God built on bad information, God begins to remove the restraints of his law and evil grows unbridled. What you and I are witnessing today is the rapid deterioration of our nation as the reality that God is removing more of his restraints as a result of the sinful ways that is breaking the law of God. The scripture says it like this, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Both the Bible and the history attest to the fact that God has a pattern for working with a nation. First of all, the Bible teaches and beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is the one who raises up nations and he is the one who gives them purpose. And when a nation turns to rebel against the voices of call, God is calling for men and women to cry out to repent. An additional way we can face the future with hope is to repent. Turn from our wicked ways. Second Chronicles, we all know it. 714 says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal the land. We can face the future with hope if we do the job of the watchman on the wall, warning people everywhere to turn their eyes upon Jesus. We can face the future with hope by prayer. As the church watches and prays, we will increasingly be made aware of the dangers, both spiritual and physical, praise God, that are lurking upon the land. Does not the Bible teach us men are always to pray and not faint? The church in many real ways is intended to be the spiritual lighthouse of the nation. The church should be vibrant and alive, a clear, powerful beacon of truth and hope that directs our nation in the right way. Our hope is not in material things, but in letting our light shine so that others may look at our character, at our conduct, and our genuine praise and give thanks to the one who lives in us. Or is the light so dim that they don't even notice the only difference between myself or them? I hope for the future looks dim right now, but there is a bright side. Let us pursue it by fasting and praying. Let us do, pursue it by seeking God while keeping hope alive. As said before, the church has but one weapon with which to fight by facing the future with hope, by proclaiming the truth of the gospel, allowing the commandments, repentance, prayer, and always remember the Bible is the word of God, which is the hope for our future. I would like to end this lesson with these words. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Our hope for the future looks great with God.
God bless you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all yeah. about you. All that you the center of our lives. And, yeah. uh, so I just want to sing this little crazy worship song called Jesus at the Center of It All. Yes.
let me first say I miss you all very much. I love you and I'm praying for you each and every day. I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life, who gives me strength, gives me health and whatever abilities that I have. I also want to take some time this morning to thank all of those who play a key part in these virtual services. As you know, Christ Gospel Church of St. Petersburg, we produce two services each week on Sunday mornings and now on Wednesday nights. I want to give honor to our bishop, our esteemed leader. We love you, Bishop. We appreciate you. To my lovely Queen Kathy, who continues to stand beside me and encourage me to assist me, to help me, to love me. I cannot do what I do without her. So anything you see that is good, we give God uh, glory. But I also want you to know that she's a big part, a big part of what we're doing here. So thank you, dear. We love you and we appreciate you. Last but not least, I want to thank you our faithful audience who tune in to share these services with others. It is our goal, listen to me, it's our goal to see souls save. We're not in the entertainment business. If you're entertained, that's great, but we want to see souls saved. We want to see families restored and the broken be made whole. So it's imperative, brothers and sisters, that if you're being blessed, that you share these videos with those around you. Let's pray. Gracious Father who art in heaven, we honor your name. We bless you. We thank you that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now as we get ready to bask in your word, we pray that you would join us and fill us and feed us with manna from on high. These and other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text today will be coming from the third chapter of the book of Ruth. I'll be reading the first three verses. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young women you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Today, just for a moment, I want to speak to you from the topic, go down to the threshing floor. This is going to be a great message for you. If you have ever been in a place in your life where you just felt like you've been walked on, you've been uh, overlooked, you've been crushed, you've been beaten, and seem like you don't understand what God is doing, this message is for you. I'm going to share five steps that you must remember from this text if you're going to meet God at the threshing floor. Most people have heard the story of Ruth and Naomi. You know that Ruth was a young woman from Moab. She became the wife of an Israelite whose family fled to Moab seeking relief from a severe famine in Israel. While there, tragedy struck the family when Naomi's husband died, as well as the husbands of Naomi and her sister-in-law, Opah. Some of you are experiencing tragedy today where all of a sudden life happened. All of a sudden things that were normal were no longer normal. All of us are going through a new normal through this pandemic. But I'm here to let you know that just like these three widows living in biblical times, back then widows had a really tough go. They had no insurance. They had no social security benefits. No, they had no pension plans and no savings account. They were dependent on their husbands or their sons. Many of these widows, they died and they were left 
to themselves to beg for necessities. Naomi gave her daughters-in-law an easy way out. And she released them from their responsibilities to go back home and try to find a future for themselves. But Ruth chose to stay and to stick it out. Oh, I feel something right now. She decided to be faithful and committed to what she started. Brothers and sisters, it's important for us to be faithful and committed to what we start. In so many words, Ruth said, Mama, I loved your son. I accepted the good as well as the bad. And now that I'm suffering a bit, I won't throw in the towel. Mm. Yes, she says, wherever you go, I will go. And your people shall be my people. And your God will be my God. I'm not leaving just because things are tough. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you are about to throw in the towel. Yes, because you are on the other side of the mountain. Or maybe I should say you are on the rough side of the mountain. But I stopped by to remind you to hold on, brother. Hold on, sister. Don't give up. Don't give in because help is on the way. Today, I want to focus just on two verses just on two verses, verses two and verse three. Here, Naomi devises a plan to help her daughter-in-law, Ruth, find a future within a hopeless situation. Oh, this is going to be good today. Brothers and sisters, let me remind you, there is a method in how we approach God. I know people say you just come to God any kind of way, but I'm here to let you know you can't just step up around the throne room any kind of way. Ah, uh, People, even in the Old Testament, didn't just show up to see the king. It was by appointment only. So Naomi, the older woman, is teaching Ruth, the younger woman, how to approach Boaz. We're going to tell you a little bit later what Boaz represents. Yes, but we must be teachable enough if we plan to go and to meet God at the threshing floor. Oh, I tell you, I get excited because I've been to the threshing floor and I know that when I leave the threshing floor, I'm going to leave with a bag of goodies. I'm going to have my, my loins full of grain. You see, there are some things that you can only get at the threshing floor. Yes, there are just some things you can't get nowhere else but at the threshing floor. But I must, I must caution you that it's tough. Yes, it's tough down at the threshing floor. But God is, is waiting for you there. Today I want to share five steps to this threshing floor. What God has for you. Listen to me. What God has for you is down at the threshing floor. You've been looking everywhere but at the threshing floor. This lesson is important because we must know exactly what the Bible is commanding us to do. See, it's one thing to know that we should go to the threshing floor, but it's another thing to actually know how to go. My assignment today is to give you the steps on how you can go down to the threshing floor. Come walk with me, if you will, down to the threshing floor. The first step is know what you want. Know what you want. Have a clear goal in mind. Look at verse 2. It says, Now, Boaz, whose young women were with you, is not he our relative? Ruth was invited to work in Boaz's field, and there were several other young women working in the same field. Yes, yes, there were other fields 
that Ruth could have worked in. But the Bible says that Boaz invited or entreated her to work only in his field. Many choices she could have made, but she she knew exactly which field she was going to be going to work in each and every day. Brothers and sisters, we must know what we want. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Know what it is you want. Don't just shoot without aiming at something. Ruth wasn't just looking for a man. She was looking for the man. Some of y'all are going to get this in a minute. You see, a goal without a plan is just a wish. It's too many folks wishing for things because they have no idea of what it is they desire. Do you know what you want from the Lord? Don't just tell God to bless you, but you need to tell him exactly what you want. You see, God already knows your heart, but when we get specific with God, God gets specific with us. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. She was not just looking for any old man. She was looking for a husband. Uh, she wasn't just looking for a sugar daddy, help me somebody, but she was looking for a man to provide for her. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. You know, if you don't know where you're going, you you are lying to wind up anywhere. Make sure you know what you want. Now, don't be like some folks. Some folks want things because they see other people with them. They don't have any idea of what they're going to do with it when they get it. They just see somebody else with it. They see somebody else doing it and they want to do it. Brothers and sisters, everything is not for you. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. But what God has for you, let me help you out. Whatever God has for you is for you. Now, Boaz means a pillar in front of the temple. It also means swiftness and strength from within. Uh, whatever you desire from the Lord, make sure that it is something special that can stand out in front of the temple of God. Don't, amen, go after something that's going to draw your uh, energy and your strength away from God. But whatever you want, make sure it's going to propel and push you closer to God. The second step here is to wash yourself, to wash yourself yourself. Naomi told Ruth, go and wash yourself. In other words, get rid of the dirt of your past so you can receive and walk into your future. Mm. Said, therefore, wash yourself. Take off the dirty clothes that you've been out working in the fields with because you're not getting ready to go to work. You're getting ready to go down to the threshing floor and you can't just show up at the threshing floor any kind of way. Yes, you need to take a shower. You need to take a bath. You need to pull off all the old stuff. You can't pour new wine in old uh, bottles. Get rid of the dirt that you've been carrying around with you for weeks and days. You can always tell when somebody need to wash themselves because they start to smell. Yes, Naomi told Ruth, she says, you need to wash yourself, wash your face. Make sure you're not walking around with crust in your eyes, looking all crazy, but you need to wash your face. Put the radiance back there. Wash your feet. Wash your body. Get cleaned up. What that means for you and me, brothers and sisters, is let, let your past relationships go if you want a new one. You cannot hang on to the old relationships if you expect to get the new one. Ah, she said, I know you miss my son your husband, but he's gone. Now he's dead. It's, it's time to wash yourself. It's time to stop crying over the old so that you can reach out and receive the new. Wash yourself. Ah, glory, glory. Ha, ha. Boaz is only for those who have washed themselves. You cannot show up at Boaz's front door with a dirty face. Ah, uh, you cannot, you cannot go see Boaz looking like a Moabite. 
That's what she was. She was a Moabite. Now we know from studying history that Moabites were a tribe that descended from Moab. You see, they came from the son of Lot, born out of an incestuous relationship with his older daughter. Now that's dirty. That's dirty. That's dirty. It's dirty when you get your daddy drunk and have sex with him. That's dirty. That's evil. That's what a Moabite came from. Can I help you? All of us got some Moabiteness in us. We may not have sex with our natural father, but we two time on God. We sneak out and we fornicate with the devil. We take some of the stuff he has given us and then we'll show up in church like we ain't done nothing. Oh, help me, Jesus. All of us got some evilness in us. But if you want to go down to the threshing floor, I need you to come on with me. But first, you must wash yourself. Tell somebody sitting close to you, say, it's time to wash yourself. You see, some folks will just never let you forget what you did years ago. But I got some good news. When people tell you, oh, child, it's nothing to you. I remember when you say, yeah. I used to fornicate, but I've washed myself. Yes, I've used to cuss. I used to gamble. I used to be unfaithful and slowful, but I decided to follow Jesus and he has washed me. And guess what? Every day I'm learning how to wash myself every day in his word. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm learning how to wash myself in prayer. I'm learning how to wash myself in commitment to his word. I'm washing myself. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Oh, I felt that. The third step is to anoint yourself. Notice Naomi told Ruth to anoint yourself. In other words, put on a fresh attitude. Put on some divine makeup. Yes, yes. Therefore, anoint yourself. Now, notice this anointing that she told her to put on was not her. In other words, this anointing that you're putting on from the Holy Ghost is not you. You must put it on. Our attitudes will determine our altitude in life. See, God wants to elevate us, but our attitudes many times is the one thing that holds us down. God has elevated some of you, but you are tethered to your past so tight until you can only go as far as the chains will allow you. Well, I stopped by to introduce you to a chain breaker. His name is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when you put on some oil, when you anoint yourself, it doesn't mean that you are trying to fake it until you make it. No, when you put the anointing all over your life, it'll make you laugh when you want to cry. Mm, bless the name of the Lord. It will give you joy in the midst of sorrow. You can say, yes, I am weeping tonight, but I'm holding on to the all because joy, the fresh oil of joy is coming in the morning. Stop. Stop complaining and reminding everybody who did you wrong. Yes, they did you wrong, but come go with me down to the threshing floor. Today, God sent me here to tell you, anoint yourself. You are going to see Boaz today. Can I say that again? Anoint yourself for today. You are going to see Boaz. Oh, praise God. The fourth step she told Ruth is put on your best garment. This is good. This is good. Put on your best garment. Notice where she told Ruth to put on her best garment. She told Ruth while Ruth was still at home. I remember she came and she washed herself. She anointed herself. She took off the dirty clothes and she's doing all these things, but she's still at home. She hasn't gone anywhere yet. See, brothers and sisters, before you leave the house, there are some things you got to do. Don't wait to get to the church to try to get your life together. I just said something just then. Don't wait until you get to church to try to get yourself right. 
Preparation starts at home. But notice, she told Ruth to put on her best garment while she was still at home. Now, I know some people who do this. Some people will carry their outfits with them if they're traveling, and they won't put it on until they get to where they're going. Now, I understand that if you're traveling, you don't want to get it rankled because you want to look your best and look all cute and handsome and all that stuff. But can I help somebody today? In this text, if you are going to the threshing floor, I need you to hear me. If you're going to the threshing floor, you need to put on your best garment before you leave home. You need to prepare yourself now for what it is you want. Yes, where you are going, if you know where you're going, listen to me, if you know where you're going, then you know what to wear. There are certain things you wear to church. There are certain things you wear on your job. Some of you have uniforms. If you're in the medical field, you can't just show up in a three-piece suit or a mini skirt. No, you have scrubs and you have certain things you have to wear. If you're going to a baseball game, you dress like you're going to a baseball game. You can usually tell by what somebody is wearing where they are going. Yeah, he's going to a baseball game. Are they getting ready to go to the beach? You see, some of the problems we are having at home is because we look our worst at home, but then we'll carry our best outfit and wear them for everybody else outside the home. Now that's worth about a thousand dollars of counseling right there. Somebody ought to say amen. People just looking crazy at home and want to look their best for everybody else. The people in your home should be the first folks to see your best garments, your best attitudes, your best disposition, not the co-workers, not the pastor, not the church folk, but the people who live in your home. Amen. Amen, lights. Not your homeboys or your homies or homegirls, but your spouse and your children should see your best garment. I'm not just talking about clothes. I'm talking about your best garments, your best attitude. Yes, yes. The garments that you are wearing will tell those around you where you are going. Oh, that's good. Husbands, your attitudinal garments will tell your wife where your marriage is is going. Wives, how you respect and love and honor your husband is an indication to where your marriage is going. Listen, when you don't mind wearing your best at home, things would be so much better for you on the job. When you take care of the house, amen, when you go to work and help your CEO buy another boat or uh, summer house, your finances will be blessed when you take care home. Your goals, your co-workers, all of the stuff outside of the home will be better when you wear your best garments at home. You must get dressed and ready before you leave. Naomi told Ruth to put on her best garment. You see, our preparation will determine our destination. Let me give you this final step and let you go for the day. The final step, she said, is now you can go down to the threshing floor. In other words, what does it mean to go down to the threshing floor? It is at the threshing floor that we prepare ourselves. We position ourselves to receive the blessing. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. It is there that we prostrate ourselves before God, get in position to receive what God has for you. So what is the threshing floor, Pastor Young? A threshing floor is a smooth, flat surface that was used in the process of harvesting grain. Yes, the harvest grain would be spread over a threshing floor and then cattle or oxen would walk over it and crush and break the sheaves apart. Sometimes they would use sticks and beat the sheaves apart. 
The goal was to separate the grain from the hus. Now here is why we all need to go down to the threshing floor. You see, both the grain and the hus grows together. Did you just hear that? Yes, on the same stock, you have grain and you have hus. In other words, you cannot have grain without hus and you cannot have hus without grain. They grow together on the same stock. Brothers and sisters, the next time somebody points at your husk in your life, they look at something that is worthless, that is valueless in your life. I want you to tell them this. You said, I know I'm carrying some hus, but, but the fact that you have pointed out some hus means that there is some grain. Oh, bless the name. I can't have hus unless I'm carrying some grain, but I'm on my way to the threshing floor. Why are you on your way to the threshing floor? Because it is at the threshing floor that God is going to separate the worthless from that that is worth so much. Oh, I must go down to the threshing floor. You must remind them that you cannot have grain without the hus. God has designed them to grow on the same stock. God uses the pain to produce some pleasure. Yes, God uses the tests and the trepidations to give you a testimony. God puts you in the storm, not to destroy you, but to show you his supreme power over the storm. All of us, I say all of us got some husk in our life, but today God is taking us down to the threshing floor. Come go with me down to the threshing floor for it is there that God will separate those, amen, who's been causing you problems. God will separate those who have caused you to stay on your face all night and pray because you have been scandalized and talked about. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, I've learned a secret. I don't blame the cattle and the ox for walking over me. Who bless the name of God. I don't blame the cattle and the ox for walking over me. I don't blame my boss when I don't get the job. I don't blame my children when they don't act right. I don't blame my spouse. Amen. I don't blame the pain, the problems or the persecutions because I know God is simply doing his job. He's trying to separate that hus from the grain. The hus was necessary to bring me to this point in life. But now I understand I no longer need the hus. So God has brought me to the threshing floor. Yes, he has to drag some of us down to the threshing floor, but he's bringing me there so that he can finish me. He can perfect me. He can separate me. He can bless me. He can deliver me. He wants to rescue you. He wants to promote you. He wants to sanctify you, but he will only do it there down at the threshing floor. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, fear not. God is not trying to destroy you. He's simply shaking something off of you. I felt something just then. The threshing floor has spiritual significance as the place where the good and the evil are separated. I want to talk to somebody prophetically right now. Yes, you are getting upset when people do you wrong, but I want you to know God uses them to shake you up, to shake loose the hus. Ah, by the Holy Ghost, God is doing you a favor. By the Holy Ghost, God is repositioning you for your divine destiny. Oh, it is not your job to separate the hus from the grain. Your job is to meet him. Oh, bless the name. Your job is to meet him down at the threshing floor and allow God to winnow your barley. 
When was the last time you went down to the threshing floor? Roof represents all of us who needs a redeemer. And Boaz represents Christ, our redeemer. When you want something from God, go down and meet him at the threshing floor. Don't be too proud. Ah, go down to the threshing floor. God wants to do some shifting in you. God wants to do some shifting around you. This coronavirus is telling us and showing us that God is doing some shifting. Can't you see the shifting going on all around you? The school system is being shifted. The church house, oh bless the name, is being shifted. I mean, the White House is being shifted. The, the outhouse is being shifted. There's some shifting going on. We're on the verge of something that's about to happen in our homes. Our children are coming back to God. Oh, bless the name of God. Hallelujah. There's a change coming. There's a shifting happening in the atmosphere. We're on the verge of some great victories, victories that we've never seen before. But first, we must go down to the threshing floor. I want to pray for you today. Oh, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost all over me right now. God, thank you. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your power. God, I thank you for the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. God, I bless your name. Father, I seize this opportunity to proclaim the good news of thy word to thy people who continue to wait for change. Speak now to us out of the volume of the book that we hear that we might edify your word. Oh, I feel that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Thank you, God, that I'm able to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our Lord to comfort all those who moan. God, blessed are those who moan, for they shall be comforted. Lord, thank you that you're able to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Do it, Father. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the sight of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness planning of the Lord that he may be glorified. God, I pray that you would heal those who are listening. Bring us into a closer relationship. Let us not be afraid to go down to the threshing floor. These and other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I hope you have been richly blessed from the word of God. Please mail your tithes and offerings to Christ Gospel Church, 2512 22nd Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33712. You can drop your tithes and offerings off at the church today at 4 p.m. Monday night virtual prayer with Mother Hughes is at 6 p.m. The call-in information is on the screen. We invite you to join us for our virtual Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Also join us for our virtual youth service on next Sunday. Calling all ladies, please join Sister Arlene Bryant, our Daughters of Destiny Women's President, and our Sisters of Christ Gospel Church as we read through the book, What It Means to Pray Through. We meet virtually each Saturday morning from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. The book and free conference call information is on the screen. Sisters, you will be blessed.